the Soviet submarine force has the capability to attack ships of the United States from as much as 10 miles away with straight running or homing torpedoes and at greater ranges by missiles launched while submerged or on the surface. They also have the ability to launch long-range missiles against any shore-based target in the world. Our national survival depends to some extent on the ability of the United States Navy to keep the sea lanes open and to protect our warships and merchant shipping should a conflict with the Soviets ever occur. Although a blend of many warfare techniques is required to protect our shipping, a major emphasis must be placed on coordinated ASW action between aircraft, surface ships, and submarines to thwart the enemy submarine. These techniques include methods to avoid submarine attacks as well as methods to destroy the enemy submarine. This film will review some of the capabilities and limitations of these vehicles and the sensors they use to detect, classify, and attack Soviet submarines. Defense against an enemy submarine is keyed to its detection and attack capability. For example, if a submarine has an effective torpedo attack range of 10 miles, then we must be able to detect and attack the submarine before it can get within 10 miles of a high value unit. If the submarine can effectively launch a missile while submerged from 30 miles away, then we must be able to detect and attack him before he can get that close. The greater a submarine's firing range, the more ocean that must be searched in order to detect him prior to an attack. The commander at sea must determine what area he can protect against a submerged enemy submarine, depending on the vehicles and sensors available to him. Now let's take a look at these vehicles that can be used in ASW operations. Aircraft have the advantage of great mobility. They can cover large areas at high speeds. They can place sensors at points distant from the force to be protected. And they can deliver weapons quickly, either independently or in coordination with other vehicles. They frequently carry several different sensors, so their response can be flexible. And they often operate without detection by the enemy submarine. Surface ships have great endurance. They may carry a large number and variety of sensors and weapons, including aircraft so they can also complete missions other than ASW, AAW, for example. And they are well equipped for command and control. Nuclear submarines also have great endurance, plus the added advantage of covertness. They have an exceptional covert detection capability when placed some distance from the force. They are not easily attacked and can perform and survive in a hostile atmosphere with little or no support from friendly units. The successful use of these vehicles as platforms for ASW sensors depends on knowing the characteristics of the sensors that can be placed on each of them. It is the coordinated use of these platforms and sensors that enables us to get the maximum effectiveness from our ASW effort. ASW platforms and sensors can be used in various combinations to screen high-value units from possible submarine attack. They can be used to create a barrier to intercept transiting enemy submarines. They can also be used to investigate a contact and then launch an attack. Sensors may be characterized in several ways. Their detection range capability, long, medium, or short. Their counter detectability, or the probability that the use of the sensor will be detected by the enemy. Their acoustic characteristics, whether or not they use sound to detect targets. And the type of platform that carries the sensor, aircraft, surface ship, or submarine. 
Let's see what sensors are normally used with each type of platform. The principal sensor used by submarines is passive sonar. They also have the capability for active sonar, radar, ESM, and visual sensors. Submarine passive sonar consists of hull-mounted and towed arrays capable of detecting enemy submarines at ranges that are frequently in excess of 50 miles. The detection range of passive sonar depends on the source level, target radiated noise, background noise, that is self and ambient noise, sonar system capability, including the operator, and the propagation loss profile. While passive sonar systems are always on submarines, an increasing number of surface ships are receiving passive sonar capability to detect submarines. ASW aircraft frequently have a passive sonobuoy capability, which is a form of passive sonar. Advanced passive sonars can detect and display the unique frequency lines emitted by each submarine class. This permits the operator to classify the target as a submarine and possibly identify its class. Passive sonar has the advantage of being covert. Its use cannot be detected by the enemy submarines. It also has the potential for long-range detections. The main limitations of passive sonar are the difficulty of determining range and the short detection ranges against quiet submarines. Range is determined by target motion analysis over a relatively long period of time. Battery-driven submarines are virtually non-detectable by passive sonar, unless snorkeling. Active sonar is installed on all submarines and ASW surface ships. All ASW aircraft have active sonar as either a dipping sonar or an active sonobuoy. Active sonar detection range depends upon its source level, the output of that sonar. Target strength, the amount of energy that is reflected by the target. Background noise, including self noise, ambient noise, and reverberation. Sonar system capability, the ability of the sonar system to process the incoming sound and the ability of the operator to interpret it. And the sound velocity profile. Generally, active sonar range is limited to five miles. However, detection in the first convergence zone is possible. Unlike passive sonar, active sonar can detect very quiet targets. However, the sound of active sonar can be counter-detected and be avoided. Counter detection range is at least twice the detection range and may exceed five times the detection range. Active sonar quickly provides both a range and a bearing to a contact, but classification is uncertain initially and improved only by lengthy observation of the target. In addition to passive and active sonar, surface ships also have radar, ESM, and visual sensors for detecting submarines. Radar requires that the submarine expose something above the surface so the signal can be reflected, and submarines expose less and less for shorter times when they are near surface ships. Some shipboard radars have good detection capability but the detection range is normally line of sight or less. Aircraft radars with their altitude advantage have the potential for submarine detection at longer range. Counter detection is far in excess of detection range, so the submarine has a counter detection advantage. Almost every ASW unit, air, surface, and submarine, has some sort of ESM equipment. 
This equipment can detect the bearing to submarines which radiate on radar even if the submarine is at long range. Submarines normally limit radiations that can be detected by ESM. Visual observation is an excellent short range sensor that can be used by both surface ships and aircraft to detect submarines that expose a periscope. Visual search is covert and can be enhanced by techniques, training, and equipment. Aircraft have a wide variety of sensor capabilities. An active sonar may be lowered on a cable from a hovering helicopter. It is capable of detecting submarines a few miles away. A limited passive sonar ability exists at the active sonar frequency. Counter detection is at least twice the detection range. Aircraft may also drop sonobuoys that can be either passive or active. Active sonobuoys provide range information to the operator in the aircraft. Counter detection is at least twice the detection range. Passive low-far sonobuoys provide frequency versus time displays that can classify and identify a submarine much as passive sonar does. DIFAR sonobuoys have the same capability, plus they can provide a bearing to the noise source. Depending on the aircraft type, up to eight DIFAR or 16 LOFAR sonobuoys may be simultaneously monitored by one aircraft. Some aircraft have the ability to relay sonobuoy information to a suitably equipped surface ship for remote monitoring. There is a wide diversity in this capability among the various aircraft types, so current equipment should be verified to determine its exact capability. Aircraft also provide a good platform for radar, ESM, and visual detection. They can adjust altitude and track to optimize detection without letting the enemy know where the protected force is located. Magnetic anomaly detection MAD is an ASW sensor unique to aircraft. It measures the disturbance in the normal Earth's magnetic field caused by large metal objects, such as submarines. It is a very short-range sensor, effective at a maximum of 1,000 to 2,000 feet. Usually, it is used to localize and verify a contact made by another type of sensor. However, it is being used more frequently as a search sensor. MAD contacts occur at such short range that torpedoes may be dropped from the aircraft to home on the submarine without any other data required. A forward-looking infrared detector, or FLIR, is a non-detectable sensor used to locate sources of heat at short range. It can detect objects that might not otherwise be detected. For example, a periscope that escaped visual detection might be seen on FLIR up to a few miles away. The effectiveness of FLIR is degraded by moisture in the air. Counter detection is not possible because the system does not radiate. Now that you've seen some of the platforms and sensors available for ASW operations, Let's take a look at why they are coordinated to protect friendly forces. Here is a task force with the high value unit near the center. Each square is 25 miles on a side. In the van of the force are two submerged nuclear submarines and a frigate. Each employs a passive towed array. The frigate is equipped with a LAMPS helicopter. All three ships conduct a passive sonar search within their sectors. They sprint to maintain force speed of advance and drift to permit effective passive sonar search. The SSNs are positioned on each bow of the frigate to provide mutual protection and enhance acoustic communications. Also, since each towed array searches best in the area perpendicular to it, adjacent units should not be stationed a beam or mutual interference may occur. The frigate not only has its own passive sonar search going, but acts as a communications link with the two SSNs. 
In addition, it provides the LAMPS helicopters to coordinate with the subs when necessary. To protect the flanks of the force, Sanobui barriers are monitored by fixed-wing aircraft. They are placed so that ship noise does not interfere with detection. This offset distance will vary and should be tested at sea. In addition, the Sanobui barrier and adjacent ships should be positioned so that a penetrating enemy submarine may be detected, localized, and attacked prior to reaching a position from which he may launch his weapons at the high-value unit. Additional sono buoys are added as the force advances, so the barrier is maintained. The position of the barrier permits the monitoring aircraft to cooperate in the prosecution of any contacts generated by the frigate or submarines in the van. Two surface ships are stationed inboard of each flank sono buoy field and conduct a passive search. They are free to move within their sectors and to respond to any alert generated by the flank sono buoy barrier. On the other hand, if the passive capability of the surface ships provides a good probability of detecting a submarine penetrating the flank, the Sanabui barrier would very likely not be positioned. The aircraft task would then be changed to one of responding to contacts generated by the surface ships and submarines. This aircraft utilization reduces Sanabui expenditure and makes good use of the aircraft's great mobility and the surface ships and submarines long-range passive capability. Helicopters with dipping sonar are available to assist any sector of the formation with localization and attack of submarine contacts. Considering the entire formation, we have distributed surface ship and submarine passive sensors around the periphery of the force. These passive sensors are at sufficient range to provide initial contact in time for aircraft to eliminate the submarine threat at long ranges from the force. While waiting for initial contact to be provided by surface ships and submarines, the aircraft provide protection in depth by also conducting a search for the enemy submarine with their varied sensor suits. Submarines are placed on the expected force track or in other high threat sectors to maximize their superior detection capability. Surface ships use their good command and control facilities to tie the whole ASW picture together and to interlock ASW with other maritime warfare specialties. Coordinated ASW uses the best features of each ASW unit to enhance a force's overall capability. Individual unit limitations are minimized or eliminated by another unit's capability. The key to ASW is early detection followed by rapid attack.